Hi, I'm John Carroll. I'm the editor of Fierce Biotech. I'm joined with another of our Fierce 15 winners today. It's Jeff Stein with Sadara. Uh, Jeff, you're involved in an area that you've been working in for a while. Tell us a little bit about what you have been doing because you're one of the company's executives that's coming back from an earlier experience, uh, in your case, Trius, and you're putting together a new company. So tell me about a little bit about your previous experience and how it's influencing your work right now. Well, John, clearly the area of anti-infectives is you know, an area that with a lot of unmet needs. Um, you've seen large pharmaceutical companies exit the space over the last 10 years. Now, recently there has been some incentives from the FDA and legislative relief uh, in an effort to get more companies into the area. Um, and you see this happening in waves. So when Trius got started in 2007, um, the big unmet need there was for gram-positive antibacterial drugs. Um, the specter of MRSA was increasing dramatically. Uh, and you saw several companies, including Trius, kind of enter into that space. Well, if you fast forward today, there are a lot of new drugs in the pipeline. Um, our drug, Tadezolid phosphate, commercial name, Sevextro, uh, just entered the market uh, a few months ago. Sold your company. Sold the company to, uh, to Cubist Pharmaceuticals. Right. Uh, the next wave is uh, gram-negative antibacterials, right? So you see several companies in that space as well. You see Achaeogen, Tetraphase, Sempra, and several others in mid to late stage clinical trials. So with Sidera, what we saw is what we believe to be a long neglected field and possibly the next wave, which is the antifungal arena. So antifungals, unlike antibacterials, there are only three classes of drugs, where there are about 19, 20 classes of antibacterial drugs. Um, and the last new class of drug was uh, entered into the market about 20 years ago. So long neglected field, and unlike antibacterials, this is an area where there's a really high mortality rate. Uh, in the types of patients we will be treating, uh, the mortality rate in many cases exceeds 50% for invasive fungal infections. So incredible need. At the same time, we have a great team of executives who know how to develop these types of drugs. As a matter of fact, your CSO came from a Cajun, uh, Kevin Judas. That's right. And he's been involved in a lot of this work, or the field, or the broader field in, in the past as well. Uh, you got a great team. You put together this group of people that have a lot of experience in this area. Um, they've done a lot of work here before. Tell me a little bit about putting together this, this company here. Uh, is it easier this second time around? or? Well, it's a lot easier the second time around. Uh, number one, just from my former mm -hmm. company, Trius, um, you know, we had a seasoned group of executives there. Uh, my chief development officer, Ken Bartazal, is the chief de development officer at Sidera. You mentioned Kevin Judis. He's actually one of the co-founders of mm -hmm. Sidera, along with Kevin Forrest, and a, a physician named Shaw Warren from uh -huh. Harvard Medical School. And one of the real stars of our executive team is Dirk Tai, who was founder of both Peninsula and Sorexa, mm -hmm. arguably the, the most successful serial entrepreneur uh, and an infectious disease physician. So just Not just your first rodeo for all <laughs> you guys. Well, it, you know, what's interesting, um, what we have in common is the fact that none of us need the job. <laughs> <laughs> Must be uh, nice. <laughs> but uh, what we saw are two things. Number one, we saw a potential transformational technology. Mm -hmm. You don't see that very often. And number two, an opportunity to work together. In my case, the opportunity to work with several members of my former team at Trius, but as important to work with individuals like Dirk Tai, uh, Kevin Judis, and Kevin Forrest. So collectively, there's an enormous amount of synergy. In fact, w one of the questions we get from investors, including my former public institutional investors at Trius is, how are you going to run this company if you've got three guys who could be CEO? And exactly. the answer is, you, you'll, you can ask Dirk Ty, you can ask Kevin Judis, and they say, well, by default, we don't want to do what you're doing, Jeff. <laughs> 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 Kevin Judis wants to focus on the science, uh, and uh, Dirk Ty wants to focus on the medicine. 
everybody gets to do what they want to do. Exactly. It's really the first opportunity where you kind of get to do exactly what you want to do <laughs> and what you're good at. So I was just kind of curious. Does it go? Do you think this will go faster this this time around than the last time around? Just mm -hmm. the whole R and D process of putting together a program and and, and rolling things out. Does it yeah, go that's faster? A, that's a good question. Or not? At, at, so our lead program at Sidera is almost exactly at the same stage of development as uh, where Savextro was mm -hmm. in 2007. So late mm -hmm. preclinical, going into mm -hmm. IND enabling mm -hmm. studies. Um, at Trius, uh, we formed the company in 2007. We put Savextro into the clinic in phase one in mm -hmm. 2008. And the results of our first phase three trial read out the end of 2011. That's a pretty high bar. Yep. <laughs> I'm not sure right. we can beat that. We right. would love to. But to that point, there are some changes at the FDA that actually facilitate that today that we did not have available to us back then. Um, most importantly, the GAIN Act and now the ADAPT Act, which is going up for vote. So these are two acts that actually facilitate interactions with the FDA. And that's really important to help get that gu guidance that's so important. Right. And number two, it should the ADAPT Act pass, that provides for expedited clinical development pathways. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm just kind of curious, one of the reasons why this legislation is in place is because Big Pharma got out of the field, right? They, they all abandoned it, it didn't look very attractive. So Congress wants to make it look more attractive and, and that helps smaller biotechs get started such as yourself. Do you think uh, you'll see more of the Big Pharma companies coming back into the field and, and does this give you any ideas about partnerships? Uh, we're seeing some big pharma companies getting reinterested in the field. Mm -hmm. Roche is coming right. back. They're very interested in novel, you know, early stage technologies. Right. I think J and J is reevaluating right. it. GSK still has an anti-infectives group. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm encouraged by the fact that they are getting back in. I think that will open the doors to more partnerships uh, because right now you have Cubist uh, and not a lot of others as far as partnerships. Now Cubist today is now building a European sales force, so they could be a partner for the EU countries, which we didn't have available early on. So, uh, I, I'm just kind of curious, uh, for you in, in terms of putting together the company, obviously you recently did a venture round, mm -hmm. you put some money together for it. Was it easier this time? I mean, how, what's the financing environment like for a biotech company, and what are the key attributes of a successful round? Um, yeah, it, it is easier now than it was back then. I mean, the financing environment is much better now, in, in particular with the top drawer healthcare VCs. Mm -hmm. um, from 2007 when we started Trius till today, there was a lot of winnowing. There's a shakeout right. in, in healthcare venture, yeah. right? So, you know, the strongest survived. Right. Uh, those are ones that are recycling funds now from successful companies, and they right. want to put that money to work, and they prefer to put that money to work in successful teams. And so if you have a successful team that you put together, uh, you get that key investor. In our case, that's 5AM Ventures, our lead investor. Mm -hmm. Scott Rockledge, who's the founding CEO of Cubist, is our chairman, so we've got a lot of operational experience right. on the board right. as, as well as in the management team. Um, it, it, it's just very accretive, it's catalytic, I guess. It's, it's, you, you get a management team, or you, whether it's management or investors, you get that first one or two just stellar individuals, those anchors, right. and it just facilitates well, it must each be great person. not to have to translate everything, to be yeah, able to be speaking right. with, a, with a group of people that have been working in the same field or mm -hmm. in the same area for years and years and years. Mm -hmm. You must know each other as well and have mm -hmm. run into each other and talked to each other at a, on a variety of occasions in the past so that you've already got something of a relationship going into this sort well, of thing. Well, at, at multiple levels, right. an executive team, uh, you know, I mentioned Dirk Tai, right. he and I interacted uh, informally, you know, when he was at Peninsula mm -hmm. and Sarixa, uh, as did myself and Kevin Judis. Uh, we are always looking forward to the opportunity to work together. Mm -hmm. uh, at the board level, we have, uh, at my former board, we have Nina Shelson of Interwest, Ted Schroeder, who just recently sold Cadence, um, and Dan Burgess, of, uh, who sold Rempec. So what's interesting, um, you have between myself, Ted Schroeder and Dan Burgess, the three CEOs with the most recent M&A mm -hmm. exits in biotech. Mm -hmm. so. so you're gonna go M&A again, or what are you gonna do? Um, 
possibly. Mm -hmm. well, that, that's not a, a focus. Our interest is in, in how building How far are you this. financed out? I mean, when you put together this financing, how far mm -hmm. did you want to take it out to? To, to what, where will you be? What's your milestone? Yeah, we'll, we'll uh, advance our lead program by a fungin through phase one uh -huh. and our earlier stage, the transformational cloud break program uh, to IND. Mm -hmm. Great. Mm -hmm. Well, I've been talking with Jeff Stein here at Sidera, is that correct? Okay. Potato, potato. Okay, Sidera. <laughs> uh, appreciate it. Congratulations on the Fierce 15. It's great to have you here and taking a minute to talk and uh, wish you all the success in the world. Great, John. Thanks Thank so you. Much.